Good evening and welcome to the Common Era Theatre Company's New Normal, New Writing Theatre Festival. This is the first time for me to do this, so I hope you enjoy it. I hope you uh, don't mind the little hiccups that go on along the way. As you can read and as you probably know, over the last 24 hours, 32 artists have combined to create uh, eight new plays uh, that will be premiered and closed tonight. As you can see on the uh, slide there, the Zoom call is being recorded. So if you don't want to be seen, please just keep your camera uh, off. And, uh, and if you could also keep yourself muted throughout as well, that would be great. Uh, in just a couple of moments, we'll be starting um, with our first play. So just one moment. Okay, once again, good evening. Tonight's first uh, play is a play called Clean Slate by Ali Costa. Welcome to Clean Slate. Your mediator will be with you shortly. Hello, my name is Adriana. How may I help you today? Hi, uh, I'm here for a session with my sister. Great. I look forward to making her acquaintance. Is she here? Currently, you and I are the only participants. Shall I get the third party from the waiting room? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Hey, Sonny, can we talk? Oh, you can talk. Doesn't mean I have to listen. Oh, wait, please. Hello, my name is Adriana. I'm here to help. What is this? An intervention? <laughs> Thanks, but the only thing I'm addicted to is Netflix. And when was the last time I heard from you? I, I know. I'm sorry. It's been hard oh oh like it was easy for me i didn't say it was easy no idea of course it like. i just want to talk no, to you want to. your success rate will be higher if you speak one at a time i don't want to talk to her yet you accepted the invitation what you joined us here why do that if you didn't want to speak with your sister half sister 
and the invite didn't have a name on it, just the logo. To be we honest, it. I thought it was a baby shower. We commissioned the logo from a children's book illustrator. It's very nice. It is aesthetically pleasing. Sorry, is this a therapy session or an art critique? I am not a licensed therapist. I am a mediator. <laughs> and a robot, I'm guessing. I am not. You couldn't have gotten a real person, Claire? Though I am not a person, I am real. <laughs> Maybe we should start over. Should we start over or should we just forget this? Is that what you would what, want? Forgive and forget, Claire. No, is well, that it? Forget. Forget. I'm just it's trying to. Prior if you speak one at a time. You didn't do anything. I know I didn't do anything. That day, the day you left, I, I said nothing. When they yelled at you, I, I could have sided with you or stuck up for you, but. I said nothing. The way you looked at me, you just wanted me to say something and bail you out or... And I didn't. Then you left and we never saw you again. Don't be so dramatic, you've seen me. Not in person. You don't call, you don't come home for the holidays. It's been years and the only way I know anything about your life is if I check your social media because you won't actually share anything with me. I read this article that said people uh, will watch or read what someone posts, someone who we've lost contact with but still care about, because we just want to know that they're okay. It's called orbiting. Close enough to see each other but far enough to never talk. We never talked. You were always a quiet kid and I was never at home. And when I was, <laughs> mum and dad and I were arguing. So even if you did say something, I, I probably wouldn't have heard it. Yeah. I did the same thing. Followed you. Uh, not literally, just uh, photos and stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah! Oh, congratulations on your engagement, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, and it's it's good to see that you uh, got rid of the fringe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I did too. It does flatter the shape of your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Remember when you used to come home at the weekends? Uh, before you left, I mean... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the monthly reprieve from uh, boarding school. I used to cherish those weekends. Remember, we used to watch old episodes of Batman together. <laughs> well, you sat there quiet like always. I was waiting for you to start the conversation. We never did. No. No, I, I guess I just like the peace and quiet. I know. That's why I didn't talk either. I thought that's what you wanted. And I thought it was enough to just be there. I didn't realise that all the things we never said, never talked about, it built a, a wall. I'm sorry. I was jealous of you. Of me? <laughs> Why? Well, you were the good kid, the sweet kid. They loved you. They loved you too. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. Uh, they did. I promise you, they did. And I was jealous of you. What? My permanent sulk, my ability to attract trouble wherever I go. You were so cool. You just spoke your mind. Didn't let anyone stop you from doing anything. 
Even your name was cool. Oh, Sunshine is not a cool name, trust me. I appreciate the irony because you do not have a sunny disposition. Yeah, that's true. I only speak the truth. Do you think we can start over? No. I think we can move forward. Good. Good, because I really want you at my wedding. Yeah, no, 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 I don't deserve to be a bridesmaid, no. I don't want you to be my bridesmaid. I want you to be my maid of honour. Claire, I... I just don't... You don't have to organise a hen party or write a speech or anything. It's just a small ceremony. Family and friends. And I want you there. But why? Because you're my sister. You don't have to say now. We can talk about it later. Like at our next session? Sure. Sure, if you'd like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I really would. Shall I schedule you for the same time next week? Same bat time? Same bat channel. <laughs> See you soon. End of simulation. Wow. That was so realistic. Thanks for, to the data you provided and your sister's penchant for sharing images and videos on the internet, we were able to create a very lifelike avatar. What do you think the odds are of, of it going like that? Approximately 5.001%. Would you still like to proceed? Yes. <sighs> oh, Claire, you've got to be kidding me. Hey, Sonny. Can we talk? <laughs> Great, thank you very much. The next play is called The Masquerade and it's by Andrea Gordon. Thank you everyone for following the protocol and uh, wearing your personal protective equipment at home today. I understand there's been some derision in my company and uh, some of my team leaders are refusing to work in the building until these measures are lifted. I called this meeting today to address this dissension in the ranks and uh, Yes, I, uh, I would just like to start by saying I personally follow these rules in my own home, especially with the in-laws. <laughs> now, I understand there's been some uh, queries which I would like to address. Um, so let's have a look. The uh, first email ah, from Heather Shaw. In the HR department. Staff are complaining that the cashless rule in the canteen is an infringement of personal rights. People want the choice to use cash. They don't want their emails to be monitored, then sent an email chastising them 
for drinking too much coffee and diabetes checks after consumption of donuts. The health of my workforce has kept this company the most profitable and the most powerful company in the world. And a cashless society is a must. After all, cash moves through many hands. It is my responsibility to keep you safe and to keep this company profitable. Ah, the next email from Saba Bukhari in our robotics and drones department. Now, Saba, uh, I was intrigued by your email. I remember when you joined this company as a bright, young Oxbridge grad. I must admit, I, I saw myself in you at that age, you know, talented, ambitious, and committed. Yet, in your email, you have stated the drones we have made to service the company have been misinterpreted as spying on workers. Staff feel uncomfortable with assigned personal drones hanging over their shoulder all day. Hmm. The company is following government guidelines. These are standard safety procedures now. Ah, yes, a report from security. Ah, we have now found the three employees responsible for sabotage to assembly rooms on the second floor. Please rest assured, these people are being dealt with. And these drones, well, just think of them as your personal assistants. Do you understand the gravity of the situation? Do you think CCTV alone is enough to capture this virus on screen? If it is, virus, please give us a wave. Belt out a showstopper. Oh, it already has. Now, last, but by no means least, my deputy, and I thought personal friend, Richard Cartwright. Richard, you and I have been friends since the very beginning. Everything I built has been with you by my side. Your resignation is a deep betrayal of my trust and our friendship. I will let you go, um, but first I would like to address some of these points that you've made. Number one, the wearing of lanyards around a person's neck are such as given to a dog for ownership. This is a ridiculous statement. Those lanyards are used for the safety of my staff and our citizens. They are used in tracking uh, for security. Uh, staff are unhappy with the lack of eye contact, banter, feeling connected, and it's reducing our productivity. I provide jobs for thousands of people. That is what makes for being happy. And number three, we started out with trust, a meeting of our common values and beliefs. We never could have got our big ideas to fly without meeting that funny old guy, the bank manager in Hoburn. He loaned us money. He saw our vision. He saw us. 
people are the investment, Rebecca, people like who we used to be. I remember him. <laughs> I remember how uh, I was fascinated with his nasal hair, the way, the way it kind of bushed out and uh, moved around when he spoke. <laughs> We celebrated with the pocket money your grandparents had given you. Five years of lovely cash you had saved and treasured. And neither of us had credit cards. Too poor, discredited. Richard, I never want to be that poor again, to need to rely on others. Do you understand? I'm not out to get you to demean anything that you have undoubtedly achieved the world needs leaders like you courageous now you've built your empire on fear people will follow you but like any prey they will not serve you with their hearts they will attack you when the opportunity arises like now i wanted to make this company great to control the chaos what is wrong with that is control of humanity worth the price of your own humanity? I built everything you see here. I, what do you suggest then? Oh, yes, you said I can uh, choose to unite people. Hmm? Oh, I suppose I could build a a global connection, the new way of communication. Well, maybe I could. I will think about it and get back to you. Great, thank you very much. The next piece we'll be seeing is called Breaking the Habit by Carrie Ryan. Welcome to Clouds. You should be proud of yourself for taking this step. Uh, I'm just going to explain our COVID-19 policies and procedures before your admission. As we mentioned in the email, we recommend a 90-day program for you as you're in need of nursing support and perhaps CBT. This is mad. Sorry, what was that? I said this is insane. That's normal. It's normal to feel that way. It can feel quite surreal, but you should be extremely proud of yourself for making this step and focusing on your recovery. You don't recognize me, do you? Excuse me? I'm not sure I follow. It's Joni. I put my stage name on the form. Don't you remember me, Shauna? For God's sake, have I really changed that much? You'll give a girl a complex. We lived in the same halls of residence. We drank in the same pubs for three years. Joni. Oh, no. Oh, no, is it? Not very professional, Shauna. I'm sorry. It's just, well... Now, Shauna, I don't think I've ever seen you wear such a tragic expression. Look, you've got the wrong end of the stick. I don't need rehab. It's all right. It's all right. Most people feel that way before they enter the center. This is a big step you should be proud of. Oh, Joni, no, let me just get my bearings and I can sort out this paperwork and... No, Shauna, listen to me. A 90 days treatment program. Yeah, that's right. So you're going to do our 90 days treatment program. And that means that... Shauna. Please, don't let the fact that I'm here put you off. Because we know each other, I can allocate another addiction therapist and make sure that I'm in the public wards, not the private ones during your stay. It's research for God's sake. I'm an actor, remember? Or maybe you don't. I talked about it often enough. I'm an actor and actually making a living from it, unlike most. So don't you see, this is just a big crazy mistake. You're researching for a part. This is all to play a part, but Joni, you spoke to the consultant. His report, 70 units a week. He believed me because I'm a great fucking actor, that's why. But wait, this is, 
well, this is just insane. What are you even doing here? I thought you were in New York working for some magazine telling people what to wear or buy or something. You telling people what to wear. You who wore the same baggy denims every single day at uni. It was Claire Francis who told me about you in New York. I met her in the Black Bull bar, so random. She told me and I said, wait till you hear this. She said, I was always the one who was supposed to go to New York. I mean, who says that? I mean, all those girls were just, and Claire was the worst. You were mad about them though, daddy's little rich girls. All they were good at was playing cello and sucking cock. This is too mad. God, trust me to pick this rehab. Of all the rehabs in the world, there you are. Play it again, Sam. That's how the movie goes, something like that. Mm, I can't remember. I've always had a crap memory, but not as crap as you. Imagine you not recognizing me. I mean, have I changed that much? I do more yoga than anyone I know. I mean, I don't look that much older, do I? Do I, Shauna? Do, do I? If that's the case, that this is research, well then you've gone to some length. If it's not, then you don't need to be embar embarrassed, Joni. I understand, I completely understand. Trust me, I do. But do I look older, Shauna? Joni. Do I? No, Joni, not at all. Good. And embarrassed? Why would I be embarrassed? This is research. It's method, darling. And we have so much time on our hands now. Lockdown stir crazy. So research is better than doing a podcast like everyone else or baking banana bread. You know, they're going to cast Downey Jr. in the lead. Can you believe that? Downey Jr. Although he's pretty senior these days, but still Downey Jr. Can you believe that? What I can't believe is this. I don't want to pry, but aren't all this stuff former addicts? Didn't I read that? I don't mean to be rude, but I find it difficult to... Uh... Well, you always went home before things got really debauched. You were never the last woman standing. You always went home first. Yes, but addicts are expert at pretending, aren't they? But New York, what happened to New York? Well, Joni, I travelled all of those miles to find the same thing I had at home. The only difference was people threw punches and puked on private planes instead of at the Radnor Arms. Oh my god, the Radnor Arms. I fucking loved that <laughs> pub. Those lock-ins. Epic. That was my first year. First year in the UK. And Jesus, it was eye-opening. My eyes opened until they bled. How many of those posh girls did you fuck anyway? All those little Sophies and Chloe's and mad about you. You had them eating out of your hand or eating something anyway. Everyone loved Shauna. It's often the case that traumatized children grow into people pleasing adults. They make themselves easy to like. They become experts at manipulating emotions, at playing to the gallery. Like actors, you mean? <laughs> you know, I saw you at the bookshop. The bookshop? When we were at uni, I'd see you going there, reading all the magazines all along the racks, golfing, fashion, even horse and fucking hound. I'd watch you from the cafe window, reading and reading and mouthing the words as if you were casting it all to memory. And then that night, I'd hear you in the pub talking about this DJ or this nightclub or some rich little dick who bought a Riyadh in Morocco. You'd say such and such had told you this and that, but it was all shit. You'd read it and you never bought them, the magazines, because you were as poor as little old scholarship me, despite your smart sneakers. Maybe you should have been the actor, Shauna. And how is that going? The acting. Tell me about it. Are you therapizing me, Shauna? So perhaps the jingle drums have been beating or the evil whispers have been doing the rounds on Facebook. Well, what Joe Bloggs doesn't understand is that acting is all feast or famine. Just because you have to take a few shifts in the Black Bull bar doesn't mean anything or 
matter what the Claire Francis's of the world might think. They're Philistines. Half of them ended up working for KPMG before getting pregnant. Honestly, I'd rather shoot myself in the temple right here. But now you've got this part. Great news. You must be pleased. It's an HBO BBC co-production. Look, I'll read out the casting notes if you don't believe me. Is it important to you if I believe you or not? Look, let's stop getting heavy. I've not spoken to another soul in 48 hours or longer, perhaps. My flatmate is back at her mum's. She is the nice type of mother, the type of mother who actually cares about you. Does that sound pathetic? I don't care. Look, life is mad, the world is mad, the world is falling apart, and here we are together. How insane is that after all these years? Is that not just insane? We should have a Zoom disco. That's what everyone and their cat is doing. Or a pub quiz. Yeah, let's do a pub quiz. Let's do a pub quiz. I'll ask the first question, all right? Only if I can ask one of my own. Uh, okay. I'm sure I'm going to regret that. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready for this? Contestants ready? Go on, Jenny. Why didn't you ever try to fuck me at university? I can't. You promised. You said you'd answer my question. I didn't promise. Look, look, I'll answer your question honestly if you answer mine. Okay, you want to know why I didn't ever... Okay, okay, I'll tell you then. Because it was like looking in a mirror, because I knew what you were, and I knew I was the same, and I didn't want to see it. Not then. I thought you were going to say you preferred posh blondes, or maybe that's what you did just say. I don't know. Anyway, talking of blondes, did you know that I was in a Flora commercial in Japan and it went viral? I had to wear a blonde wig. There were all these little Japanese girls who dressed like me, the same clothes, the same wig. I'll send you the links, you won't believe it. And they had a conference where so it was like... Can I ask my question now? Well, Shauna, it's getting late and I've got a casting in the morning. Busy, busy, busy. You must have other inmates to meet or whatever you call them. I'm, I'm gonna go... Joni. <sighs> All right then, but I can tell you right now, I'm not an alcoholic. I can tell you that right now for free. So don't waste your time. You know, I, what I've discovered during this period of research is you're like a cult, you lot. My God, like a puritanical cult by your standards. You'd have to send everyone at university to rehab, all of us, everyone. Well, go on then, ask your question. What are you waiting for? Where does it hurt, Joni? Great, thank you very much. The next piece we'll be seeing is called The Oak and it's by Sarah Isaac. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, sorry, I, I was I was just going to call you. Oh, uh, did you get there okay? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, how is it? Still standing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Must be strange to be back. It's. Quiet. Well, you should enjoy that. Should I? Yeah. Get back to the bachelor pad. <laughs> it's a grubby one bed in the middle of Elephant Castle. <laughs> <laughs> How is he? Fine. Really? He stopped crying. Hey, that's good. After about an hour. 
<laughs> I had to bribe him with chocolate. Hey, that's what sugar's for. <laughs> exactly. That's what sugar's for. God, I miss him. I miss him so much, and it's only been an hour. <laughs> He's going to miss you. I, I don't really think he understands it. Yeah. Um, He's going to miss well, your still... baking as well. And that's why I should be there, because who else is going to bake you a delicious banana bread at nine o'clock in the morning, eh? <laughs> Listen, um, I, I just want to say thank you. Oh. For this time, I've, um, I've really enjoyed it. Me too. 100 days together. I know. <laughs> and, not one, and, and not one bite. <laughs> yeah, it's been nice having you there. See? Another pair of hands. We're good together. Uh, I've really needed it. It's a shame it went so quickly. Did it? What? Did, did it did it not for you? Uh, no, I didn't mean it that way. I, I just meant like... It, it, it was nice being able to spend some time with him and not having to drop him off, uh, not having to, to get him back after a weekend, being able to wake up with him, put him to bed, just, just spend time with him. And how does he sleep? He he sleeps like a a, a, a starfish. Starfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got used to it. Ah, oh, it, it's like being embraced by this like very soft octopus. <laughs> oh, he just <laughs> always wants to be in the middle. I know, I know. He gets that from you. No. Yeah, he does. No. Yes, he does. He, it's like you always used to kind of like migrate towards <laughs> the middle of the bed. No way. No. Yeah, and I got really good at falling asleep right on the edge. I've got oh, loads of I, practice. I, I just love how he holds you so tightly. He, he, he holds on to you like, like he never <laughs> wants to let go. Oh, he doesn't. He is so beautiful when he sleeps. Uh, he said that you were um, in the middle of a story. Yes. Well, are you going to tell it to me? It's sort of between me and him. So... Simon. We've made a pact. Ugh, a, a pact. A pact. Well, you know, <laughs> you know that I'm going to have to be the one that has to finish this story at bedtime. Fine. Um, okay. Once upon a time, there was a little ant. An ant. It's, uh, stay, stay with me. All right. Okay. 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 Now, um, Mister Ant, as Mr. he was known, Mister Ant, okay, okay, was married to to Mrs. Ant. Of course, he was. A don't. Don't, okay, and they had a, a beautiful son. Now, Mr. Ant uh, is coming to the end of his life, and what he realizes is that he hasn't had enough time with his family. So, what he does is he, he summons up an angel, okay, and he says to the angel, what, what I would really like more than anything else in the world is just one more day with my family. And the angel says, Well, I, I can't do that, but what I can do is in your next life give you a longer life. Okay, so in his next life, Mr. Ant incarnates as, as a bird, okay? And Mrs. Bird and the son are with yeah. him too, yeah? Yeah, okay, now, now birds, birds live for 30 years, okay? So, so now Mr. Bird is approaching the end of that life, and again, he just wants one more day. So he goes to the angel and says, I just want one more day with my family, and, okay? Well, she, she, she agrees, she agrees to Mr. Bird because he's a, he's a good guy, okay. yeah? Uh, this time, she lets him incarnate as a human, okay? Now, humans have about 80 years of, of life, but his years go so quickly 
that that he, he runs out of time and again he wants just one more day so he goes up to the angel again and says look i've had such a nice time with all these people around me can i just have one more day and the angel sighs and goes okay okay i will make you and all your descendants oak trees okay and that way you will get over a thousand years together. The angel realizes that in every incarnation, what everyone wants more than anything else in the world is just one more day with their family. I love that. See? That was a good one. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know you were so poetic. I am a man of many talents. <laughs> oh, and humble too. Can I say something? I think we should try again. Oh, Simon. Look, I'm, I'm not saying that it will be, I'm not, I'm not saying that it will be perfect or that we won't fail or there won't be, be problems, but I, 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 I really, really want to try again. I just don't know if I, if I'm ready to. Oh, come on, come on. We're the, we're the dream team. I don't know about that. No, you, we've had fun these last hundred days. You've had fun. Really? Yeah. yeah you're, you're more relaxed. You're happy. Charlie's happy. You've got that, that twinkle back in your eye. You reckon? I can see it. From the ant, to the bird, to the human, to the oak tree. We, we, we are, are meant to be. You know, it's not as easy as that. We... I miss you. And I miss Charlie. We're good together. We are. Just say yes. Please. I know you want to. Anna. Anna. Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you very much. The next play will be seen is a play called Sensitivity by Hugh Allison. Once Sensitivity is finished, we'll be taking a five minute Interval. Sensitivity by Hugh Allison. Katie. Get some sleep, Alice. But, Katie, I'm scared. I'm scared too, but thinking about it won't help anyone. Talking about it, Mike. Why don't you talk to her, Jodie? She didn't call for me. But you're more... I've got a reputation as... Neera. So? She's been through a lot. She's seen a lot. The crash, for example. You've seen a lot more of those things than I have. You can relate. You had the best view when Marion was... Oh, I don't want to think about that. Some of the blood landed on me too. You should have seen some of the things on me. Why would anyone use flyers on their own? Shut up, shut up. Just stop talking about it. I thought you wanted to. I thought you wanted to. It will be a lot more humane this time. Humane? 
the lockdown was tighter then. The boss couldn't get out and Marion was causing him a lot of aggro. It's not the boss I'm worried about. You know, this is the longest Jodie's gone without making a joke. Hey! It's affecting me too. Plus, this morning I realised I'm bi. Oh, we'll be there. Uh, don't be so... By cuspid. That was... <laughs> no. It was insensitive. You're too sensitive. You can't make me less sensitive. Sensodyne would make you less sensitive. Was that a joke? He sounds like an advert. I love commercials. I don't like the one about teeth, though. I mean, I don't like the ones about sweets, though. <laughs> you just don't like sweets. But... Just get some sleep. But if the boss didn't eat so many sweets, tonight wouldn't be the last night for us all. Oh, there's only the four of us left. Three? Oh, I keep forgetting Marion's gone. Me too. I mean, I can't forget the actual... I'm still not used to her not being next to me. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, it was the four of us since 2011. 2010? The car crash was 2010. Driving home from the airport with his grandchildren on the way back from spending a fortnight in California. It was 2011. No, it was 2010. Ten years ago. Almost to the week. They'd gone for Disney's 55th birthday, and yesterday would have been Disney's 65th birthday. Would have been. If the park had been open, closed for the virus. I love that place. The boss loved it. Grinning from ear to ear he was. Oh, the cheesy ride photo, and we were all like, yay! I'd love to go again. <laughs> He'd like to go again. He won't let anyone say he's too old for anything. I really admire that in him. How old is he now? In his 80s. In his 80s? And only now he's getting his teeth removed. Ronnie had his out when he was 21. False is forever. I wonder uh, what Ron? happened to Ron. You know, Neil's dad. How can you remember every name? I wonder what happened to him. He died. Yes. But what happened after he died? I mean, I can remember the crematorium, but what would have happened to him after that? Doesn't matter. Humans and teeth are different. Mm. What happens to teeth? when they're dead, or have been removed, or whatever. What's going to happen to me? Oh, it depends how you behave in this life. If you were bad, you get incinerated with biomedical waste. And if you were good, you get put under someone's pillow and travel off with the Tooth Fairy to a golden hall in Asgard, where you are surrounded by Valkyries and never have to be brushed again. <laughs> Does make you smell, though. Valhalitosis. <laughs> Aww, I thought we were being serious there for a minute. Oh, I just don't know what to believe. It's not a case of believing. It changes from tooth to tooth. Some get incinerated, some get kept. With us, we're more likely to be used for research or education. <laughs> the worst of it all is just that we might get separated from each other. Ooh. Sometimes teeth get sold on. Sold on? Well, either for an art project or to a dental scrap metal dealer. Hmm. Or... If the person is famous, the tooth could be sold on eBay for a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, like one of Lily Allen's teeth could get sold to one of her fans. Exactly. But that was quite a random example. Lily has a song called Smile and 
Oh, sorry. I'm not as good at puns as you are. I think I'm starting to get used to why you use comedy to... It may have been funnier if you used Norman Wisdom Tooth, Harvey Milk Tooth, James Dentine, Desmond Llewell Incisor, or, of course, Lassie. Lassie? She... What she said. Just because I've heard that one before. What about sports people? Ah, former Spurs centre forward, Robbie Brace, baseball coach, Alan Gum, Ashley Colgate, Joe Root. <laughs> Books? Ah, Mill on the Floss. Oh, book people, but characters. Oh, uh, uh, Adrian Mola. Types of paint. Enamel. Singers. Kate Nashers. <laughs> Bands. Uh, uh, smash mouthwash. Or pulp. Songs. <laughs> oh, cavity. Herbs. Uh, ginger. Fighters. Hmm. Films. Jewel in the Crown. Oh, filmmakers. Uh, Merchant Ivory. Game shows. Take me out. <laughs> Country. So it's uh, sweet. Swedentia. Oh. oh. City. Uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> Part of a donut. Filling. Advice. Know the drill. Work metaphors. Daily grind. Ways to remember each other when we're gone. Plaque. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna miss you guys. Hey, no need to be so down in the mouth about it. I am happier though. Good. Get some sleep. Good night. And if I don't wake up, Goodbye. Goodbye. Ta ta. Great. Thank you very much. There will now be a five minute interval and we'll come back at eight o'clock.
Welcome back and thank you very much for attending this evening's performance. Um, I will be posting, I posted the program at the top of the event at seven o'clock and I will do it again at the end of it if you uh, would like to see the entire running order of tonight's events. Uh, if you enjoyed yourself, please do look up our Just Giving page and donate generously to the 30 actors who have given up 24 hours plus of their lives to this project. And I just want to have a quick word of thanks to them for their hard work and dedication and creativity to make this project possible. Uh, we have three more pieces. The next piece is Aileen by Martin Keedy. Sorry, we're experiencing technical difficulties here. Uh, we'll be with you in just one moment. Good morning. Would you identify yourself, please, for the record? What? What's your name? Oh, right. Why didn't you say so? I thought I had. Anyway, I will ask again now. What is your name, please? Ailey Murphy. And may I ask again, just for the record, uh, how old are you? 21. 21. I know. No one ever believes me because I look so old. I suppose that's what happens when you're always on the road, eh? And would you classify yourself as a gypsy or a traveller? Oh, I'm a traveller. Or as most people call as a fucking traveller. You're in Parliament now, Aileen. No, I'm not. I'm here in my caravan. I'm on my phone. I mean, you are giving evidence to a parliamentary inquiry even if it is one that is being conducted of necessity by Zoom. And that means you must use parliamentary language. What's that? Polite language. In short, no effing or jeffing. Do you understand? Oh, right. Sorry. Good. I note that you are not a member of one of the official gypsy or traveler organizations who are submitting evidence to the inquiry. No, I'm not. I'm the old woman. So what made you want to submit evidence to the inquiry? Well, I heard about it on the radio and TV. How it's all part of this big reset you're supposed to be having after the lockdown. And the Black Lives Matter protests and everything else. So I thought, instead of hearing from all these official organisations, most of who aren't even travellers or gypsies at all, you should hear from a real traveller or gypsy like me. So that's why I got in touch. Right. Well, we're very glad that you did. In this evidence session, we are primarily focusing on the rights of traveller and gypsy women and children. So may I ask, please, what is your marital status? I'm married, if that's what you mean. And, and how long have you been married? About five years. Five years? That's what I said. So you got married when you were 16? Yep. 
you are aware that it's illegal in England to get married at 16 unless you have the consent of your parents. Oh, my parents consented, all right. They were delirious when I married Donal. Why? Because his dad's the head honcho of our community. Community? You mean in the whole traveller community? Oh, no. Just our little bit of it. And how big is your little bit of it? Oh, about 20 caravans. Right. So you got married when you were 16. Uh, what have you been doing since? Mostly making babies. <clears throat> right. And how many babies have you got? Only three. Only three? Yeah, that's not many for travellers. Some of the girls my age have four, five. Really? Yep. But I'm happy with three. Not sure my husband's happy with three, but that's another story. And how old are your children? Five, three, one. Very symmetrical. What? I mean, they're spread out very evenly. Oh, I. Uh... You might think we planned it that way, but I can assure you there was no planning involved in it at all. In fact, there's virtually no planning involved in the life of a traveller. Is that so? No. We don't know what's happened one day to the next, let alone a year, one year from the next. I mean, apart from the last few months, we've been stuck here in this one site, just like everyone else during the lockdown. I would imagine that insecurity it can be very difficult to get used to. I am used to it, and it's still difficult. It only gets more difficult as time goes on. How so? Well, my oldest, Jimmy, he's five. So I thought I should probably start finding him a school. Oh, the things I went through to find him a school. What kind of things? Opposition, mostly. From who? Everyone. Everyone? Yes, everyone. Travellers, non-travellers alike. You, you faced opposition from your fellow travellers? Of course. My husband didn't speak to me for almost a month, except to hurl insults at me and don't even get me started on his parents. The head honchos? That's right. I think they'd like to see me thrown out. I half expect to wake up some mornings and the rest of the caravans are moved on and I'm left here all alone in one with bricks for wheels. And what about the external opposition from non-travellers? Well, them, oh, they're just shits. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but they are. Some of them abuse me to my face. Some of them abuse my children. Some of them threaten to come here to this camp and smoke us out. Really? Yep, really. And that's not the worst of it. No? What is the worst part? Well, when I finally find a school that would take her Jimmy in, then I finally persuaded my husband and his parents to at least give it a chance. And then I finally told all those other parents where to go. I find out that the teacher can't even do his job properly. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, for instance, they were teaching them about the Holocaust. Primary schools teach the Holocaust? Oh, you'd be amazed what they're teaching in primary schools these days. Anyway, they weren't teaching them the whole story, the whole Holocaust. What do you mean? Well, they told the kids about the Jews, obviously. Communists, gays, and other groups the Nazis killed. But they failed to mention one particular group. Who's that? Well, don't tell me you don't know either. Know what? The Nazis killed gypsies and travellers too. Oh, right. Uh, of course. <sighs> For goodness sake. So there's my wee Jimmy telling me about it. And I said, and did they mention the gypsies and travellers? And Jimmy just shook his head and said, nope. So I went down there to the school to educate them a little. What did you tell them? Only the truth that half a million gypsies and travellers were killed in the concentration camps. And God knows how many more were shot or burned in their homes. Half a million? It's a lot, isn't it? 
especially when you consider how few gypsies and travellers there are. Are you sure? Christ! I just had it from the teacher, half a million are you sure, and now you're saying it too? Well, I must confess that I was unaware the figure was quite so high. Well, I know it for a fact. How so? Because my ancestors were there, in Auschwitz, or Birkenau, or one of the other concentration camps. Really? Absolutely. They were Roma, my mother's side of the family. Oh. Right. I'm very sorry. Apparently it's called the Forgotten Holocaust. Well, I, I suppose it is. No, it's not. It's not forgotten, because that would mean people knew about it in the first place. It's the untold or the invisible Holocaust. That's what we call it, and that's what it is. So, if you're here, inquiry is gonna do what it's supposed to do and actually improve the lives of gypsies and travellers after the lockdown. That's what it's meant to do. Well, then it can start there. Because just as people are tearing down statues of slave traders and everything else they're doing for the Black Lives Matter, then they should learn about the lives of gypsies and travellers and everything that's happened to us in history. And then perhaps they wouldn't look at us like dirt today. Right. Well, I think I've finished with the preliminary questions. So now I'll open it up to the rest of the committee. Right you are. Bring them on. I'm just getting going. Great. Thank you very much. The next piece that we'll be seeing is Reset to Perfect by Peter Norgate. Uh-huh. No, you need to plug it into the left. Exactly. Now you should see a small switch there that you just need to flip. And there you go. I just heard the sound. No, that was definitely it. That was the sound. Great. So you're back in the simulation. Wonderful stuff. Well, just if you have any more problems, let me know. My name's Mary. You can call through and come straight back to me. And you. Bye bye now. I'm Jesus. No, really, actual Jesus. How crazy is that in an IT center? It wasn't my first choice, but I do like helping people. So here I am. Hello IT, how can I help you? I see, and it's just beeping, no flashing noises or anything else like that. Amber, okay, that's not a problem. Um, don't panic. What you need to do is you need, to, exactly, go around the other side of the bunker uh, make sure you flip all the switches on the main frame back to the center and everything should come back to life. C. Jesus. Water into wine for the 21st century. The 21st century makes me feel old. I've seen a lot. Joan of Arc came, changed the world, got a tan, left, a, left as a bucket of ash. Charlemagne tried to unite the world and doing so but did a not too terrible job. The no other boys on the naughty list. Cortez, who I never thought should have made it across the Atlantic, but other people had other views and that was the end of the Aztecs and their cute temples. Pol Pot with his very strange reading of what the past was meant to teach him. Not unlike Mussolini and that uber self-conscious Austrian boy. There have been a lot of variations on the theme of peace on earth. Hello T, how can I help you? Really? I think my colleague, Octavia, is meant to be working on that over the ethernet cables on the same floor. Yeah, you're better off calling her. I can't do it remotely. She's the one who's better suited to that. Yes, but do let me know if you have any problems. I'll be here to help. I'll tell you what. Hey, third line, right? Okay. Scotty, don't give me calls like that again. I know that you enjoy the old turn it off and turn it on again brigade, but that's your purview, okay? Leave that to you, don't bring it to me. People, well-intentioned, terrible execution. Terrible execution for over 150,000 years. 
you would think in all that time that instead of trying to test every permutation like a rat in a maze, there would be a sense of stepping back and thinking about things. A reading of the signs. They've had them all. Volcanoes, El Nino, drought, famine, plague, pestilence. Is it really that hard to take the hint? And when you know when you're on the wrong track, it's exhausting. Sometimes you just want to shout, Oi, shave an ape, that way. No, that way. Turn this on and turn that off. And what happens? Off becomes on and on becomes off and everything gets messed up again. Not what I asked for. But I guess I don't look bad this time out. And the hair is fun. I always enjoy a good hair. Styling products, they are the joy of the 21st century. Mold and change and start over and rinse out and water washes it all away and you have perfectly clean hair to do something new with. So you have another go. Reset to perfect, you know? Hello IT, how can I help you? Okay, calm down. Yes, I understand that facilities bomb bay doors are not supposed to lock senior personnel out. All I need to do is route the backup over to the... You are through to the most senior manager on the team. Once I've routed the... Ah, well, I don't seem to have the right level of clearance. No, um, I think I need an additional key code. I'll hang on. Hello, this is Mary in IT. Mary Wilson, level five. Yes, the decision has to be yours, sir, but I won't be able to... No, there's not another way, sir, I'm sorry. That's the way the system is configured. I only have clearance to level five. Of course, yes, I'll wait. I hate this part. I always hate this part. I like them, genuinely. It's true, they are like sadomasochistic hamsters with alopecia, but actually, I like them. They're better than the dinosaurs who never did anything. Well, tiny arms after all. They're better than the plankton and bacteria, only ever interested in sex and multiplying, dirty bastards. But a job is a job, sadly. Oh, hello, sir. Yes, I'm still. I see. I understand, yes, so highly unusual. But as you say, the facilities bombed by doors won't open. Of course, I feel quite honoured, sir. I don't think a medal is, oh well, if you insist. So, yes. Yes, if you insert the code into your personal device that will come through to me. Have you pressed enter? Ah, yes, I can see it now. Level 8 authorizations on my screens. Of course, I'll open the facilities Bombay doors now. No, no, I can see on the screen that the warheads are still not activated. Yes, sir, of course, sir. Thank you, sir. I really do hate this part. But 150,000 years, the best that we can give you only tallies to an F. Time to let another species take a turn. <laughs> Maybe it'll be the ants. At least they're mainly female. <sighs> Great, thank you very much. Our final piece tonight is a play called Delivery Only by Derek Miller. Hiya, who is it? Uh, it's just Steve. You're fucking joking me. No, I'm not. Come on. Seriously, this is, this is your food. And apparently your ex. This is too weird. I know, desperate times. I can't. When I uh, accepted the order, I considered calling them and cancelling it. Calling who? Just eat. When did you start delivering food? 
couple of weeks after lockdown. Buzz me in and I'll take it up to your door. I'm a tad freaked out, Spencer. Sorry, Em. I, I, I thought it'd be a laugh. I, I guess I mis misjudged it. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. I'll just leave it here. No, don't do that. Someone keeps nicking my Amazon. Bastards. What do you want me to do? It's just weird, Spencer. I mean, you don't even have a car. I've got a bike. What? I've got a bike. Really? Since when? Just after lockdown. What happened with LRT? I was furloughed for a week and then they made me redundant. Look, do you want this or not? What's in it? I'm in Paris. What's in it? In what? The bag. Your usual? A chicken kebab, cheesy chips with curry sauce, uh, six poppadoms, pop which you'll crush into the mango sauce and eat like cereal. And I guess there's a mixed grill in there too, which you'll wrap in a naan, making a disgusting, massive burrito. I wish. No, just your food, I'm afraid. This is a pretty scary attempt at getting me to answer you. I'm weirded out. It's okay to be weirded out. I'm weirded out. But honestly... <laughs> and you just texted me last week for a socially distanced Prosecco. And you didn't message me back. I get it. What if you don't? What if you waited at Hurry Curry and you paid off the delivery driver and you brought it here yourself? And stole a bike. And or got three orders at the same time. And I, <laughs> Of course you did. It's Thursday. We always ordered from them on a Thursday. Because when we ate there after Hyde Park Festival, it was you talked to the man and he told you that the fresh meat always comes in on a Thursday. I don't remember that. I was pissed. I spent like half a grand that day. I, I was so drunk, I, didn't, I don't even remember the cure coming on stage. But you knew that I remembered and that's why we always ordered on a Thursday. I remember us dancing to Stevie Wonder. What are you doing? Texting my family in case something happens. Oh, come on, Em. I'm... Look, I'm seeing someone else, okay? <laughs> Seriously. I... This is just... This is too much for me right now. Are you watching those... those serial killer movies again? I am. You said you weren't going to watch them alone. You, you promised. Well, I think a breakup nulls all promises. Did we? What? Break up. I, I just don't remember the call. Is that why you're here? You wanted to hear it in person? Would have been better than the ghosting. So it is true. Oh, you, you wanted to come here to, to get some, some closure? No, I, I, I just saying it would have been nice. This is weird for me too, Em. I'm, I'm standing here, I'm holding a, a soggy bag of, of takeaway and, and, and I'm talking to a, a doorbell. I, this, is, this is embarrassing. I'm, I'm a delivery rider on a bike. Well, I bet she doesn't mind. What? The girl you're seeing, but she doesn't mind. Yeah. She live in Ibiza. What's her name? You think I made her up? What's her name? Millie. Millie. Look, she WhatsApped me. Uh, see? It could be any one of your friends and you've labelled it Millie. Look, I'm going to leave this here. It was nice hearing from you. Is that all you needed? No. No? I would have appreciated a tip. That, that was a joke, Em. I'm sorry. For what? For you thinking that I wouldn't be okay with you delivering food. It's fucking admirable. 
I'm sorry too. For what? For appearing like a guy who would disguise himself as a delivery guy and pretend to have a girlfriend. <laughs> Honestly. You're I... not that kind of guy, Sven. I, I mean, you never creep me out once. And I mean, I'm more like a lad than you in so many ways. <laughs> well. <laughs> no, just shut up a minute, Sven. I... I'm paranoid about everything at the moment. I mean, I'm scared to go and have a, a tea at the back of my mum's bloody garden. I get it. I'm feeling isolated too. Yeah, with Millie. <laughs> Look, uh, we haven't even seen each other face to face yet. I'm scared you might not like my smell. <laughs> well, you do have a very specific musk. <laughs> Always need someone to talk to. So you came to see me? Yeah. No, honestly, this was a mistake. I, I, it was an accident. A nice one, but it was an accident. Or fate. Not sure if that's dark or hopeful. <laughs> it's kind of dark. I was shocked to see you and I was scared to see you, but I liked seeing you too. Which is fucked up if you were stalking me. Am I that starved for attention? Jesus! And, and the fact that I thought I was strong to cut and run. It's fine. And then that's what I'm up here thinking about, you know, every night while I'm drinking myself to sleep. Me? No, not you. Sometimes you, but mostly how to operate moving forward. I'm good at hiding. On the bright side, you're good at opening up through a doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard you like this. Look, I've got other deliveries to do. Um, if I just leave this here and if it gets nicked, then um, just text me. Uh, you have it. I'm going to order a fresh one. Sure. <laughs> it, it was nice to hear you, Em. Um, be safe and um, don't, uh, don't watch too many of those horror shows. Well, I'm ordering another one, so you'll be back, right? Doesn't really work like that. Well, could you just bring me one? Off the record? I'll pay you back. I get off at 10. Can you wait till then? I can make it. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll see you then. Or, or I'll hear you. <laughs> Is that okay? I mean, for now? Yeah. It would be nice to be your friend again. I miss the friend part. You still there? Yes. Okay. Um, I I'll see you soon. Can you just pretend like we've never met? Yeah, I can do that. Good. Great. Thank you very much. Well, that concludes our evening of uh, new theater, new normal, uh, new writing. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I think I'm going to try to tell everybody to just turn themselves on, see who's out there, see how many people are still there. So feel free. And this will also serve as our curtain call as well. So actors take a bow, audience members applaud. That's how these things work. I also want to uh, especially note the playwrights and the directors who contributed so much 
to this as well. So let's give them a round of applause. And uh, and if we can, if you feel stick, like feel like sticking around, um, we can go to the virtual pub uh, afterwards. I, I would like to invite you to my favorite pub in London. There, there it is. There, there it is. There, you might you might recognize it. Come on in. Come on in. Come on inside. It's the Lawndale in, uh, in Notting Hill. Feel free to come in. Um, I'm going to leave this open for a while. I'm going to get myself a beer. Um, feel free to stick around and have a beer or uh, say thank you. But again, I really want to tell um, all 30, all 30 of you guys who are involved in this. Um, thank you very much. It, it was a really excellent experience. Um, I look forward to watching the video recording so I can actually maybe enjoy more than being a, a, a stage manager on it. But uh, it was a real pleasure. Thank you very much and uh, take care. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. See you later. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. No one's sticking around for a pint. Oh. <laughs> Am I the only one who wants Where's to? You? Where's your drink, Matthew? Get your it's just drink. A, just, the, just the just the hard just the hardcore of us are they? They're sticking around. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, you already have your wine, don't you? <laughs> I know, and I haven't touched it. I swear, I've not had a sip. <laughs> Apart from when I spilt it on my hand in the dress room. So <laughs> yeah. great, great. Well, well done. So, so we have how many people are left? Seven, oh, can I? Can I I'm going to show non-video participants as well. Can I do that, guys? And can you turn yes. your cameras on? I have no idea how to ask you guys how it went, how the experience was. I have no idea um, <laughs> about that. Um, I would be very interested in hearing it. I don't know if it's something that you can write down, because um, that's probably a bit easier to do. I also had an idea of having some kind of d feedback tomorrow as well, but if you just want to email me any feedback or any thoughts, um, that would be great. So is anyone going to go get a beer or shall I just be the first one? Go get a beer. I'm going to get one. I have a drink. Oh, gin and tonic even. Oh wait, oh wait, gin yeah. and, no. That's just the person, that's just the person waiting. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna go get myself a beer. I'll be back and go to the. Aww. See you in a minute. Good job, everyone. Aww. Really great. cool variety. That uh, uh, on the same theme, and like you could see the theme running through it without it being uh, repetitive at all, which was really cool. Yeah, because did he actually mention the theme at the beginning, or did he? Did we miss that? No. I I didn't hear him mention it um, during during the performance or, or prior to the performance, but, but we I felt like it. See it. Yeah, I could definitely see it as a, a, a through line for sure. Yeah. We knew, he didn't tell anyone, but we knew. We knew. <laughs> yeah. Has, any, has anyone had any sleep? <laughs> Since well, not you, clearly. Ali, have you been to bed <laughs> after no. I last saw you? No. Well, yeah, I was going to go. I was going to go take a nap, and then when he proposed that we possibly meet again, I didn't fall all the way asleep. Um, I just rested. My eyes were closed, and then I popped back over here, and then no one was here. And I said, "Well, I guess I stay awake." And then I ate some food. <laughs> How's your head, though? Are you feeling better? Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, um, I drink some more, drink some more water, and and get some get some proper sleep because two hours of sleep is insufficient. But I Ali's, Ali's in California, by the way, guys, if you didn't realize that. Right. Yeah, where is everyone? Where is everyone? <laughs> is anybody else from out, outside of the UK? Or I'm I know American, but I live in Leeds. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Where, where are you, Ali? Are you in? Well, hello, little one. Oh, uh, I'm in Los Angeles. Hi, Hi what's your name? You have to unmute yeah. yourself, Matt. You no, can you pick can any name you want. Yeah. You can pick any <laughs> superhero name that you'd like. I'll let anyone in these pubs, you know? They're oh. desperate. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> see if they can help. <laughs>
Welcome. Hi there. Adorable. Hi, friends. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> it looks like I'm at the shop, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Funny. You know, Oh, and you're still recording. I wasn't sure if you wanted to keep the recording. <laughs> <laughs> 